long-winded, running through this life like it was mine. Never settling, but setting every goal high. 1,000 burpees on the path to my own destruction or success. But what is a mistake without the lesson? See, the best teacher in life is your own experience. None of us know who we are until we fail. They say every man is defined by his reaction to any given situation. Well, who would you want to define you? Someone else or yourself? Whatever you do, homie, give your heart to it. And stay strong. Stay strong. With me in North Yeah. Love. Not a nigga's fail, but I won't. Big K, My Z. big energy and big things. Up, Talking baby. about it, what we doing? How you feeling? You know, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, I'm velvet at the same time overwhelmed, going through a lot of gangster shit, trying gangsta. to figure it out, trying to navigate through it. How you feeling? You know, I'm blessed and highly favored. You For know, sure. I'm excited that we sitting down, promoting this good gangster love. Come you know, on. The other side of it. Yeah. Over, yeah. over, we overdue. You hear me? Yeah. So, as far as overwhelmingness, Overwhelming, coping with overwhelmingness. I just got off the phone and told somebody uh, one of my favorite quotes. Tough times don't last, tough people do. And uh, you know, suffering silence. So that's how I kind of cope with it, suffering in silence. Um, suffering, silence, both words that they can have a positive connotation if you flip them around and consider the negative impact that they have on you as a person, right? Um, so suffering. You are a big person. And when I say big, I don't mean monetarily. I mean, like, energy-wise. Mm. When you step in the room, ah, you know, you feel it. It's a presence that's held. So do you feel like that is the reason why you feel like you are suffering in silence versus just talking about it, having a conversation? No, nah, I just feel like as an African-American big dog, um, you know, we don't... Well, we ain't looking for no shoulder to cry on. They yeah. gotta be gangster about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I know it's people that got, got it 10 times worse. Yeah. So what I look like crying out loud or, you know, suffering in public when it's niggas that, you know what I'm saying, got it 10 times worse than me. Yeah. And um, they taking it on the chin, gangster. You feel me? Sturdy. I ain't worried about nothing, running it concurrent, whether it be life in jail, whether it be, you know, dealing with an illness within a family or a recent yeah. loss. Yeah. I just feel like, you know, um, I'm gonna take mine on the chin too. I ain't, you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna cry too much about it. Yeah. Nah, if you in my household, you gonna feel it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, if you in my circumference, you gonna feel yeah. it. But outside of that, you no, know, I'm just, I'm running my concurrent, taking it on the chin, and I feel like uh, it, it. I don't know. I'm, I'm able to deal with it better in that aspect. Yeah. So it's a good coping mechanism for you to be able to kind of internalize it. Now let me ask you. When you being realistic with yourself, real gangster shit, right? Uh -huh. Is it helping? It might not be helping, but it's not. Boom! I'm gonna let you stop right there. We gonna marinate on that. For okay. A second, right. So coping, it it gives a connotation of we're dealing with something, but we're not really dealing with it. And what I mean by that is we're doing what we need to do to keep going, so we can navigate, right? Cause that's what we all doing. We navigating together, right? But in reality, even when you got the destination, you sometimes miss moments on the way to the destination when we do that. Cause it's just like being one track mind. Mm. So like, now let me ask you the question I started with. Like, how do you feel? Like, if you being real about the overwhelming, it's like, is that shit got you your head above water? You feel like, you know, shit, Nick might be drowning a little bit, you know? Nigga suffocating. Yeah. Nigga suffocating. But once more, uh, you suffocating. We gonna just marinate on that, cause this is real. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's a real conversation. This is the conversation you having with the inner court. You know? Yeah. You're talking about, but that's not the part they see in people like us. You know? It's like a, we see the big energy. You know? We see the gang. Yeah. Like, necessarily saying the process of what it takes and I feel like sometimes that's the part we should be more accountable to disclose to people not for the sake of you know being vulnerable in front of somebody you don't know but more so for our own healing 
Like the best thing I ever did for myself was become accountable. And the first thing I started with was my feelings. Mm. So I'm gonna encourage that throughout the duration of our conversation because that's how we doing. We won't gotta dig deeper than you wanna go. But I want you to feel like there's some big energy that's had out of the encounter. You feel me? Like, For sure. Real, real gangsta stuff, you know? For sure. So you feel overwhelmed when you suffocate. Why? Where do you feel like it's coming from? Uh, it come from a numerous of things, numerous of things, whether it be, I'm saying, uh, everything internal, everything is, is internal. It's nothing external. I don't think I let too much, too many things that's outside of my life bother me, yeah. outside of my control bother me. But that. when it's outside of my control and it's internal, it kind of, yeah. it kind of function with me. You feel me? Cause it's, it's, it's fucking with my livelihood. Yeah. It's fucking with my young and livelihood. Yeah. Um, it's fucking with my future. It's fucking with their future. Yeah. So that kind of bothers me. But um, do you feel like it's stemming from things that you could have changed and changed the trajectory of how where you are at right now is, or do you feel like it's something that kind of blindsided you came out of nowhere? To I think it's things that I could have prevented, but it kind of blindsided me. Right. Things that I could have prevented. If I had my head on straight, if I was, you know what I'm saying, mentally legitimate, I could have naturally prevented it. Yeah. And um, I fumbled. Yeah. But, uh... It's powerful that you said that. Yeah, I want to acknowledge that, though, like, marinate on that. Yeah. It's powerful you said that because that's accountability. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Like, healing really stems from accountability. And that's the whole point of any conversation you have on being a better person is going to resolve back to healing. Like... When you get better, it means that you're healing wounds that are open, and you're allowing them the time to heal so that they that scarring is deep. You know, if you let a wound not heal, you can cause more trauma, bacterial mm. infections. Mm. That's all it is. A conflict. This come on now. Yeah. Conflict the spirit, where it's like, if I just take the time now to step out a little bit out of my comfort zone, and I have a conversation about like you said, it's it's powerful. It's it's people who are gonna watch this and be like, dang, him too. Wow. And that him too is gonna make it more real for them. And it might inspire for them to be like, you know what? I am not okay and tell somebody. Just like how we have your conversation. Straight up. Like I'm telling you, that's why I started getting the way that I was with even talking to you. You know, our initial conversation about building this was all in the spirit of healing. It's in love. So you suffocate. That's okay. I want you to know from me to you, you're not alone in it. Mm. You know what I mean? You're not alone in it. We've had loss, you know what I mean? Like, let's talk about loss. Cause that can be a huge thing. Like, personally, I lost my grandfather in 2019. One of the biggest losses I've ever taken. I didn't know if I was gonna recover. That's the scariest feeling when you got big energy, right? Like, so how do you feel? Cause I know we, we cut from the same cloth. And my loss is right there. Mm. That's granny, that's schemo. Mm. Uh, damn near probably the most uh, I hate to put significant on it cause you know I done took a lot of significant losses but yeah. significant losses uh, you know granny squad that's that's everything everything we do is in the name of her um, you she know raised the, you too right for sure most yeah. definitely since I was two years old to probably 22 years old you know yeah. what I'm saying but um yeah, that was my dog. That was that was who that was the main person. Yeah, you know I mean, you look for in the stands that's rooting yeah. for you. That's the one where you accomplish something and you you look for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying you look for you look for that that that, that like that just that cheerfulness that yeah. that, that you know what I mean like I don't know how to put it, but it was like just everything everything we do. Yeah, that confirmation, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying and um, so you know I feel like. They kind of slow me down. Yeah. When you make a mistake, you make sure she ain't watching. Yeah. You hear me? So it'd be like, like once more, these mistakes or these fumbles, these little minor setbacks, it'd be like, damn, nigga need granny here, you know what I'm saying, to check me about yeah. that. It, it ain't too many people that can check me about my wrongs. Because, yeah. you know, wow. I take it offensively. I take it offensively. You got shit going on. Hold Fuck that. is you talking about? Hold it. Yeah, hey, go correct your gangster. Hold, hold you know on. what I'm saying? Hold on. Because, you know, we're going to correct yours, too. Yeah. Respectfully, though. <laughs> Respectfully, though. Yeah. Because even though Granny is not present, right? And this is something I'll come to you like how I... Because that was my grandpa for me, right? Like, 
anytime I did anything major key. Like, my mama is for sure calling granddad. Like, hey, this is what she did. Just off of the strength of, like, I want her to feel it. So I feel that accountability, right? So if the room you in is not big enough to check you and hold you accountable, what's that suggest to you? If you were to put it in the words, just posing the question. If the room I'm in not big enough to check me or hold me accountable. I need you in the wrong room. This is the reason why I say that. The most nah, I hear I hear that. Yeah. I hear that, but I also feel like, you know, they're gonna hold me. I got some gangsters around me that's gonna hold me accountable. Yeah. And they're gonna check me when I'm wrong. Bro, you tweaking. Yeah. Bro, you tripping. But Are you born? niggas ain't as niggas ain't as gangsta as granny. Yeah. Niggas ain't as gangsta as granny because niggas ain't raised me. Yeah. That lady raised me. So she gonna set trip. She gonna tweak. Yeah. She gonna make me feel some type of way. Yeah. It's gonna register. Yeah. You feel me? And you know, niggas within my in my circumference, when they growl on me, it's like, I right. but nigga, you yeah. also fucked up right here. Granny invincible. Yeah. Ain't no fuck ups with her. <laughs> She the one who took me in, you yeah. feel me? So it'd be it'd be kind of different. And I ain't got that, I hate to I hate to step on people like that, so I'ma rephrase that. Um, I just don't got you just that. You don't feel like that. Yeah, with a lot of people. She yeah. was that one. Yeah. She was really that one. And um, it's a couple people that could check me and put me in my place yeah. as far as aunties, uncles. Yeah. But it still don't register like same. granny. Yeah. It still don't register like granny. Our relationships yeah. is different. And, uh, you know, our bonds is different. And so uh, just with her absence, with her absence, I feel, I damn near feel like I'm to the necklace. Yeah. I feel alone. You feel me? Yeah. Um, now, look, where name on you? You feel like you're alone. So, like, that's the scariest part of going through stuff is that your isolation, you know? You talking about dealing with things in silence. That's a result of that. So it kind of comes with what we already choose to use as a coping mechanism. It's like we feel alone. So me personally, like my sister AP, I told you about it. That's my dog. Like she can do that granny stuff. But what I realized is, is that like the same way my grandfather used to hold me accountable, she's probably one of the first people and since him passing that really kind of like hit me but in the spirit of love like i know what you're saying it's not envious it's not biased you're not trying to stroke my ego like you're giving me that real thorough but like in the spirit of i want you to be better not because i'm trying to break you down you know tear you down so i feel 100 percent. but what i had to learn to do was to receive the information because I had built a wall around that area because he was my go-to person, like, you know? And my pops, like, they have been the men in my life type vibe. So I had to learn to break down that wall because I was afraid of losing the connection I had with him by letting anybody step in. But what we had to realize is that it's never going to go nowhere. She in you, not on you. Period. Period. Hello. For and sure. so that energy, once you let that resonate, walk a little lighter you know this shit still gonna hurt but you walk a little lighter and it's a day by day thing like me i naturally go into isolation as well mm. when i think it's because my personal opinions i put the pressure to be like i don't want to put that off on you but sometimes what i learned with, with ap was like it's the nature of you putting it on them and them knowing you really don't want to they gonna want to be there to help you so I encourage you from me to you, like, try to have those conversations just selectively. You know, every now and again, put it out there because I'm telling you, like, the more you release, the lighter that you get, the lighter that you get, excuse me. But like, for me, carrying the load, and I, I use this metaphor all the time, like, the suitcase, you put baggage in it, right? But you're supposed to check your baggage at each destination, right? Mm. So in hindsight 2020, like any situation, it could be a chapter of life, it could be a new relationship partner, it could just be a new season of, of growth for you in one particular area, like you're supposed to check the baggage at the door, period. 
Like I go into every new season of my life with an empty suitcase and the baggage that's inside is really the shit that we didn't dealt with in that chapter. The hurt, you know, the pain, the anguish, you know, the tears we might have cried, the, you know, arguments we might have had, and sometimes it's even the laughs we may have shared, like all that's baggage. You gotta decide for yourself what's worth caring. Mm. But not to put it in terms of everybody's going through that though. Now imagine entering into an atmosphere and the energy of people that's like really healing. It feels different. And I'm telling you as somebody who is like every day I try to be better in that room. Every day. I encourage them to talk more. So I encourage you to talk more like just find sometimes like for me it'd be writing sometimes. Same thing for me. I already know. Same thing for me, that scribble. Yeah. That scribble, that's where I release it at. And uh yeah, cause that last, you know, joy we just released, we had some little, yeah. you know. I felt you though, but that was you. Yeah. That was you. Like that was real raw emotion. Like I'm dealing with something but I gotta release it. So that's the beauty of being an artist though. Nah, it's crazy you say that because that's what it is. It's like I won't talk to somebody. But I talk to the masses. Yeah. I put it in my music and, 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 and let that resonate with the masses. Yeah. And as far as an individual, you know, I'm very selective on, on, you know what I'm saying, who I individually, I mean, let that shit drip on. But, yeah. um, now nah, yeah, the losses, the losses, they say they come with the wins, though. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, we yeah. ain't, ain't I take it on the chin, run with it. Uh, I was just tweaking. I was telling one of my young life just the other day. Uh, it was a bird knocking on my my window. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is this bird knocking on my window for? Right? It keep it. It's just tweaking on my window. Then it go from the window to the car window. Yeah. It's in a mirror, right? So I ain't tripping. I ain't sweating it. And um, you know, I tell somebody about the bird knocking on my window, my significant other, and she like she go tweak on it. She look it up. Right, and she come to the conclusion that uh, immediately before she look it up, she like, I think that's a sign. Uh, I think it's a more on some on some uh, on some negative shit. Yeah, I think that's a bad sign. You yeah. feel me? And I'm like, go tweak on it. She tweak on it, and I think it's says something like, that's the somebody who you love significantly that passed. You know, cardinal? trying to get a message to you. Don't tell me it was a cardinal. I don't know what kind of bird it was. I don't want to. Don't quote me on it. Nah, it was like a little gray bird with a little okay. yellow, with a little yellow drippage on it. I'm you feel me? I'm but uh, they said it's somebody who you know recently passed, uh, or somebody significant that passed revisiting you. Yeah. And uh, it wouldn't leave my car alone. Not a car that I'm driving at this particular time. It's Granny car. <sighs> It wouldn't leave the car alone. I filmed it, et cetera, et cetera. Took as many pictures as I could. Yeah. Jumped out the load, chased the bird down. But how did you, how did you feel? Like, oh, you it, know, I, you I see- cry a little bit. I can't help it. I'm a yes. real nigga. You hear me? Yes. But, uh, and you know, I ain't tell that story to too many people, but uh, that's granny. So now when yeah. I wake up and, you know, I go outside and I see that same little bird. I don't know if it's the same bird, but it's, they come from the same yeah. cloth. They cut from the same cut cloth. The same cloth. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell it's the same, you know what I'm saying, species. And, uh, you know, I holler at her. Yeah. I see you, baby. Even if it's something like, I see you, baby. How you doing, girl? Hello. You feel me? But, um, and that's, like you said, a coping mechanism. Yeah. That's one of the ways I cope with this shit. I, I try to take heed to the signs. Yeah. No matter what the sign is. Even if the sign is, sit your ass down for a minute and, you know, the police get involved. Yeah. Even if that's the sign. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, Cause it might, you know, what they say, a stumble might prevent a fall. Yes. So you know, um, yeah. I take heed to all the signs, and um, I look at them all in 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 a perspective of that's Granny. Yeah. That's Granny talking to me. You know, she can't physically holler at me, but that's Granny talking yeah. to me. And um, so you know, like I like I said, the losses come with the wins. The wins come with the losses. And um, even though I suffer in silence. I take heed. I take heed to all yes. the signs. So it, 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 it helps a lot. And that's the part that's the most powerful. And that's kind of what I wanted you to release as well. Like, even when you're suffering in silence, there's things that we do to make the, the suffering a little less, you know, to alleviate the pain a little bit. So in terms of having conversations, you know, and like you said, you like take the miracle signs and wonders as granny. Like, 
if you were to be honest with yourself, is it really just the seeking of like your presence? Like, I'm gonna create a realm where I can be in you because I may not be allowing other people the opportunity to get close to me like Ooh. that. And you know, you know, we, we don't gangsta shit. Like, yeah. keep it to me straight. Now, you know, I'm a genuine person. So if I genuinely don't feel like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can operate on that type of magnitude yeah. or like, a, you know, you can function with it like Granny function with it, then yeah. I accept it for what it is. Yeah. Now, I love my mother dearly. I love my father dearly, but I just don't feel like they operate on that type of frequency. Yeah. No, no shade, no yeah. smut, no none of that. They're my dogs, function yeah. with them. We just yeah. operate on different frequencies. Um, so, you know, it's, I, and, it's like, um, I ain't gonna lie, like, I've yet to meet somebody that operate on that type of frequency. Yeah. And so it's uh, it's difficult, it's difficult. Yeah. Same thing with that dude right there, Schemo. Yeah. I've yet to meet somebody that operate on that type of frequency. Yeah. I've yet to find a friend like him. Wears, he wears feelings on his sleeves. Yeah. He called me and said, nigga, you don't fuck with me? What's yeah. going on, nigga? How them niggas got chains and I ain't got a chain? Yeah. Tripping. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That shit touched me. It do something to me. Cause at least you telling me and not them. You telling me and not them. Yeah. And you you getting it off your chest. And you yeah. getting it off your chest with your brother. You feel me? And um, just many things, many yeah. things. And uh, you know, I, but they absence, it mag it, it magnified their absence. It let me know like um, it's crazy. Like some people can check out. And you still feel the same. You cry a little bit. You can't help it. You're a real yeah. nigga. But yeah. you still feel the same. You feel no difference. You feel yes. no difference. It, it didn't affect your life too much. Yeah. Them losses affected my life too much. Yeah. You hear me? So, yeah. um, just too much. And uh, it's crazy that uh, I be trying to find something that could feel that void. Something that could feel it. Somebody that could feel it. Yeah. And um, I've yet to find it. I've yet to find it. And I think that's where the suffering silence come from. Since I can't find it, it'd be like I got to find it from within. What I got to read. Not to cut you off, what if you change form? Because I just don't want you to get too far away from that thought about filling the void, right? What if it's not a void to be filled? You just talked about the bird, right? And how Granny was in the spirit of that bird and whatever they can folk was coming to your car, right? Like, you find the beauty in that moment, which means she's still present. It's just the lack of the physical side of things. That For sure. You be wanting it, you know? Like you said, you do want a shoulder to cry on. You just don't want the ones you got. Real gangster. It's okay, though. We all feel like that sometimes, like, and I think it's underrated that we don't take the time to transition that mindset. It's a journey, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was there. Yeah. Uh, my, my thing is the ladybug. My grandfather, like, he come to me. He used to have ladybugs in his house down in Wisconsin. And, like, every time I seen a ladybug after he passed, I swear to you, I've never seen him in Georgia. Mm. But after he passed, like, anytime I feel real low, he's always right there. To the point to where my daughter knew it. You know what I mean? But what it made me realize is that even with, because one of my biggest things when he passed was, man, like, he not going to be able to see my baby get older, you know? That hurt me, you know? But she remembers him now in the ladybug. Oh. So when she see it in the book, when she said, share that story with your babies. Oh. I encouraged the game to, like, share it because I forgot I told her. She just said it to me the other day. Straight up. Yeah, and it's like we forget the powerfulness of being vulnerable with our kids sometimes too. You never know. Like for me, I used to look down on it because it was like, oh, you making stuff too heavy. Like staying in a child's place, but we're raising adults, and we don't want to encourage them to not feel comfortable enough to talk just about the stuff. Sometimes we, I know you got it where you got girl like they talk. And sometimes it be sounding like it's like this is gibberish. <laughs> like <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, but then when you sit down and you listen to them, like sometimes I cried to my daughter for the first time like a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. And like I was so embarrassed, but I couldn't hold it in no more. What you was crying about? Man, my grandpa. Okay. But I broke it down to it. When I tell you, I felt so much lighter. Like 
and I it was unexpected because I was feeling bad, but I was so heavy. You know how that be. Like you said, suffocating. And he was like, dang, man, I just need a release. And she caught me crying in my room. And like, she just came up and she was just rubbing my back. And it was just a powerful exchange because it was like, ooh, I raised you to love like that. That's what it did for me. Like, I I did something right. Straight up. You feel me? Like, I'm not being punished. Like, this is a beautiful, like, Grandpa, thank you again for giving to my life because had I not been sad about you, I wouldn't have been able to express this to my child. And now we have a stronger bond because of it. Start with your kids, man, I'm telling you. Even if you don't go into detail, but like, as a black man, it's so powerful to be able to be vulnerable because the world conditions you to not, like, it's stuff you go through that I could never even fathom. And like, real gangs, like, people ain't gonna tell you that. It's not just black women who are suffering. It's on both sides. And it's, there's a society and the infrastructure that's built to appease that and feed nah, in. Nah, you it. right, you right. And I feel like, uh, even with me, outside that household fella, HGM, Hell Gang Mozzie, you talking about it, yeah. I'm on point. You know what I'm saying? We paying attention to everything yeah. moving. Yeah. Nigga approach me, what's happening, gangland? Yeah. You hear me? But when a nigga walk in that household, it's like uh, Timothy Patterson. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Hey, come here, baby. Give me kisses. Yeah. It's a whole nother, you hear me? Hell And uh, it's crazy. I remember one of my brothers, rest in peace, Zilla Zoe. We was sliding in traffic, fucking around, regular gangster shit. Yeah. And he got a phone call from his daughter. And the nigga just softened all the way up. We went from talking about nigga bitches and sliding and gangsta yes. shit, nigga, to what you doing, baby? Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's me. That's yes. me. Then walk in that household, nigga, vulnerable. Nigga, whatever irritate her, irritate me. Yes. I don't give a fuck what it is. Yes. And uh, so I understand completely, completely what you're talking about with that vulnerability. Cause um, you know, I'm me at home. I'm yes. me at home. And I'm me in these streets too. I'm yeah. me. But it's just like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a different right. Yeah, you gotta convert. You gotta yeah. transition. Yeah. And it's immediately. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's I can't be as vulnerable as I am with her in these trenches. Yeah. And I can't be as hard as I am in these trenches with her. You yeah. feel me? So yeah. for sure. Real gangsta. Like for sure. Kids are the purest form of love, really. Man. You think about it, they so unbiased. Like, they gonna play with whoever as long as we have a common interest. Like, in society, if we operated that way, I could only imagine where we would be at long term. Even amongst ourselves, though. Like, if we being real, a lot of the conflicts that we create come from things and things we're fearful of. Mm. Sometimes, like, for instance, you talked earlier and you just like, you don't, you know, you don't really want to hear what the people who are going to give you feedback now have to say because they got their own shit going on. But look at it from the perspective of if you listen a little more, they might give you a different perspective. Just a little bit. Like, you you have intuition out this world. I told you that from day one. Like, your intuition is spot on. So you know who you can tell certain stuff to. But sometimes... We need the opposing viewpoint to strengthen either how we feel about something to make sure it's really solid or to give us a different perspective so we're not beating ourselves up about something we did. Mm, the opposing viewpoint. I'll fuck with that. It that feels makes character, sense. I feel like. Not for sure. Like, when people tell me, I'll intentionally go tell the people now. And this has just been a growth thing, like, I'll intentionally go say the things that I know are gonna make me the most uncomfortable to people who I know are gonna give me that that thing that I don't wanna hear. Just to hold myself accountable once around. Nah, Sorry. that's it. You said it. That's cause that's granny for me. That yeah. was that was her. That was her role. Yeah. For me to just go in there and tell her it got ugly, I caught this case, or yeah. you know what I'm saying, it got ugly, I spent all my money on this automobile or whatever the case, she gonna give it to me raw. Yeah. She not gonna sugarcoat it. She not gonna is it's unfiltered. Yeah. It ain't like if I tell him how I feel exactly. Yeah. He gonna feel some type. Nah, she gonna she big dog. She gonna big dog me. Check nope. this out, nigga. But it it it's a lack of. I'm the big dog. I'm the big dog now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. sometimes I just want to be little dog. Yeah. Sometimes I want to be little dog. It's crazy. Um, 
but I embrace that role. I embrace that role and I feel like it's my job. It's my job the same way it's my squad job to correct the nigga when it's wrong. But nine times out of 10, I'm gonna be the one doing the correcting. Check this out, bro, that ain't, uh -uh. And I ain't gonna give a fuck how you feel about it because I don't, I don't benefit, I'm not benefiting if you don't, if you don't function with the way I feel about it, it don't, it don't benefit me or in in no way if you don't fuck with me. Yeah. Like, um, how am I trying to say this? What you eat don't make me shit. What you eat don't make me shit. Yeah. If I tell you about yourself and you don't like me and you don't fuck with me, it's cool. We, you yeah. know, it only thing, I mean, only repercussions is I might have fucked off a friendship. Yeah. But it ain't like I fucked off my bills being paid. Yeah versus yeah. somebody telling me how they feel and they and I don't fuck with it. I might be fucking off the way their bills get paid or I might be fucking yeah. off a couple favors when they need me. Yeah. You feel me? So they kind of reluctant yeah. to tell me that shit. Yeah. Now, there's very few people that, you know, that, that don't operate on that time. Very few people who gonna give it to me raw, whether yeah. I like it or not, on a granny type hype. But once more, uh, it's just different. It's just different when it came for granny. It was just so... It was just so, it's so much love in it. Yeah. It's different. It ain't, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's love and it's, uh, what they used to say, uh, tough love. Tough love. It's that tough love. Yeah. And I yarn for that gangster shit. I yarn for that. That's my dog. But, uh, now nah, we, we embrace it all. We embrace all the losses, et cetera, et cetera. So, Granny, if she was here now and Ben is just you suffocating. What type of conversation? Like, do you even know where you can start? You fucked up. You fucked up, nigga. I told your ass, sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. Uh, you told me you was going to do this and you was going to do this and you ain't did shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, Perspective-wise. Yeah, just good. Just that's, that's what's making you heavier. It's because you know already what she can tell you. And so that might be put in, and I don't know. I'm just nah, you know what's what's crazy? I think she built me for this shit. She was preparing me for this shit. She built yeah. me up for it. Um, and I and we can go back to cleaning the house. Yeah. Why you can't never do some shit without me having to tell you? Yeah. You feel me? It just yeah. go back to that. Why I gotta tell you everything to do? Yeah. Like nigga, why when I pull up from work, nigga, my house ain't already naturally clean? Yeah. Why you can't nigga put some cabbage on the stove, nigga, and fry some chicken? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like right. why I gotta request every little thing. Yeah. And like I said, I feel like she built me up for that shit and prepared me for it, cause it's the same thing. Why I gotta tell you every little thing? You know better. I shouldn't have to be there to tell you every little thing, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You know how to move accordingly. You know how to stay out of trouble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know that them little girls is counting on you. Yeah. Why I gotta why I gotta be there to tell you that, nigga? You know that. Yeah. And so uh um So that's what you're hearing now. Nah, that's what I'm hearing. That's yeah. what I'm hearing. But at the same time, like I said, also see the benefits in it. Whether it's sit your ass down, you're yeah. doing too much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sit your ass down, you're doing too much. Or whether it be, let me put you on these stiff stipulations. So yeah. Know what I'm saying you could calm down on that syrup you've been sipping on. Yeah. Or maybe you calm down on that dope smoke you've been chiefing. Find you know a way to cope. Yeah, chill yeah. out, nigga. So uh, you know, I take the good with the bad. I take the good with the bad and uh I don't complain too much. Once more suffering silence. Yeah, I don't complain too much. Though. Yeah, it you gotta, is. You got big energy it too, is. though, because your perspective is fire, you know? Like a lot of people they, they do what we call the victim wrong, you know. It's like, I'm not going to, at least you're taking accountability for the things that you could have transitioned and done better. But I encourage you in that. Don't beat yourself up because you did know better because your humanity is still prevalent. You know what I mean? Like, as humans, like, you ever heard the phrase human error? Like, we're capable of knowing how to get A, B, C, D and get to F, G. You know what I mean? But we might skip a couple steps and then have to go back and retrace our steps sometimes, like, Give yourself credit for being human. Mm. It's tough, like, I'm telling you, I feel you. Like, on a major level, we know that. But being yourself up can be more detrimental. And this energy you can spend by just feeling your way through it. Like, there's times where, like, I go on a fast and, like, just cut off everything. So maybe that's what you're speaking of. Oh. Now that, 
You know, that's what you allude that's to. It's me. just a forced cut off. That's like, me. Cut yeah. that phone off, stiff arm. Watch out, nigga. I need my little, you feel me? Yes. So you right about that. That shit is healthy. I feel like that's one of the most healthiest mechanisms. Yeah. Straight up. Just to cut yourself off because realistically, anything that controls you, it doesn't give you peace. You know, think about it, the things in your life that you're not peaceful about or that you're uncertain of. Like people or things having control of you creates a degree of uncertainty. Even like being under any sort of influence, right? Like it's a temporary relief that we feel like we control them, but it's really it controlling us. And it's like until you're accountable for it and you take that control back, the only way to have control over yourself is to feel it. Mm. Cause once you know how to feel it, it's just like, you know, how they say, you know, when we get the flu, right? Or COVID, for instance, you get it one time and then now you don't get it for the next 90 days or whatever the statistics are. Like, you gotta feel it to be able to get over it. And I encourage everybody to do that as far as healing. Like, the fact that you can even conversate the way you do about granny now, like, I'm sure that was the process. Me, I couldn't talk about my grandpa for a Go through it to get to you it. You hear me? You got to go through you it to get me? to it. I couldn't even do it. So it's powerful. I'm telling you, just feel your way through it. Like, And over time, these type of conversations, sometimes too, like for me, when I start doing my lives and like talking to people about just grief and healing, like all the things that I thought like weren't a conversation started, when I start doing it, like you start to find a common nature with us. Yeah, that nigga won't ask my oh. yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> say yeah, I'm saying. I'm just saying. If you're happy and you know it, and your hands, uh, uh, you all know about that shit. Hey, check it out. So look, you was all in my business, right? Okay, our business. Our business. So, but Hello. now I'm specifically jumping in your business, though. Okay. So how is it that uh, what's some of your coping mechanism from your for your untreated trauma? Honestly. What do you do? Honestly, it was the accountability which mm -hmm. led to, damn, Kayla, you can look yourself in the mirror. So I started to write things on my mirror, mm. affirmations and shit. Like, for instance, when my grandfather first died, I was like, I will heal. You know what I mean? Like, you are beautiful. You are smart. Like, you know, just things to fill myself up because when you healing, right, you're learning to trust again. That's really what it is. It, it boils down to trusting somebody else or trusting yourself enough to make a better decision next time. So scribbling shit on your mirror really uh, it's assisted. It's different. It's, it's different. different. It's different because it makes you more purposeful about looking at yourself. Mm. See what I'm saying? All right, so I know that's like, if you told a nigga to scribble on his mirror, he'd be like, nigga, what? Yeah. So what advice would you give to somebody just called me? They right. text me, they was crying, going yeah. through it. Yeah. I try to go through it with them. Uh, I try to tell them about my, my situation and what I got going on. Yeah. And, um, you know, so they could kind of like catch the same vibes. Like, nigga, you ain't alone. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm in this gangster shit with you, nigga. I'm yeah. going through my shit too. But um, I couldn't find the exact words. Well, he probably, I, I talked to him for about 10, 15 minutes, so yeah. I'm pretty sure he took, he soaked up a lot of good game and ism, but after the conversation, I don't feel like I gave him a real impactful solution. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, he gonna watch this. So what would you give, what kind of advice would you give an African-American or a street nigga, a nigga, you know what I'm saying, that enduring hella pain, going through hella shit, whether he facing time, whether he lost somebody he, he loved dearly, and not whether, collectively, all these things, he, you know okay. what I'm saying? It felt like he to the neck. Um, people call him, you know what I'm saying, when they need assistance, yeah. but he ain't got nobody to call when he need assistance. Yeah. Um, how you think, what, 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 what's, as far as like your advice and your perspective, what's some coping coping mechanism that you, I mean, alley Yupi. Damn near not playing the victim is the first thing. Mm. You can't be the victim mm. and the hero of your own story. And so me, I'm an error on the side of, I want to be the hero of my story. You know, I desire to be the hero. 
you take on the hero mentality, that's why we want to save everybody and not let anybody know we going through something and they might tell us that they dealing with something, we give them a solution we can't give ourselves. So that was why I took myself out the victim mentality. Not the that's victim. that accountability. Hello? It all circles back to that. Accountability. Like, like the brand, big energy, like it's all in the spirit of big love. All right, but look, that's what I was telling you, accountability. I think I was coming with the accountability on um, suffering silence, right? But I don't think everybody got that same type of mentality. I don't think a lot of yeah. people carry that same type of strength to suffer in silence until they forced to. Yes. Like when you're in jail, you kind of forced to suffer in silence because yeah. you're on a you on a main line with a whole bunch of niggas who... But well, what's the idea behind the prison system is that they put you behind closed doors. And you're on the yard with a whole bunch of niggas who, who probably got it worse than you. So you can't cry. Yep. If you're doing three years, niggas, a nigga in there doing 30. Shut up. Yeah. Feel me? But what is that force? Accountability. Accountability. Because you got to look at yourself and say, you know, I put myself in this situation. But accountability without suffering is my first bit of advice. Is own it, but don't drown in your own shit either. It's just like when you're walking a dog, you pick it up and you put it in the trash. Acknowledge your shit, but throw it in the trash when you're done and be done with it. And being done with it doesn't just not mean not doing it no more. It really means making peace with it. You gotta find peace in a neutral nature to how you operate. Like, I'm acknowledge shit, but I'm not gonna beat myself up about it. And a lot of that comes with security, which is my metaphor of the mirror. Putting stuff on there, you gotta be secure with yourself. You gotta love yourself enough to know I'm worthy of what's ever on the other side of whatever trauma I'm experiencing right now. You know what I mean? And, a lot of times that victim mentality will make you feel like you are a victim. There's no other side to a victim. You're just a victim. But when you're a hero, it's levels to this shit. So if you want to be the hero in your own story, you got to be accountable and you got to love yourself. And part of that is learning to embrace who you are. So I, I recommend journaling, like write down the things or even if it comes down, we got voice memos, like we got all different record yourself making videos. When I start doing my videos, 30 seconds, I'll be talking about stuff that people are thinking is just about some far-fetched shit, but it's really how I feel inside. It's what I'm experiencing, it's a vulnerability. That's part of accountability though, is vulnerability. Be real with yourself. I'm hurting right now, you. That's why I said it's so powerful. As a black man, the world is set it up for you to not be okay with being vulnerable. But in your vulnerability, there's so much power. That's why I encourage crying. Crying is a beautiful thing. I fuck with it. It's, I fuck it's a with release it. of energy. Not in front of everybody, no, but I fuck for with sure. it. For sure, for sure, for sure. But think about how powerful you feel after you finally shed a tear. Nine times out of 10, it's just like the rain. You wash away the shit and then you come back to a brighter state. You know, the sun come out, you get some bit of clarity. Sometimes you just gotta let that shit out. You know, it's even more fun when you got people who you can kick it with that can, you know, shed them tears and be there with you to support you through it. So that's another thing is if you're in a room where you feel like you have no one, be courageous enough to step in another room. Go step outside because your comfort zone isn't bringing you healing. And if you really, truly want to be better, you're going to be OK with the sacrifice that comes. And sometimes that's your comfortability. We get so like. We are seeking comfortability in a long-term nature, right? We want to be comfortable enough to afford this, afford that, and live a life to where we can do what we want to do that's comfortable. So comfortable isn't always bad. But in terms of your healing, comfortable is bad. Because when you get stuck in the same routine and doing the things, you know, the way that you're used to doing them, but you're not yielding the result of feeling better, something got to change all in accountability you know like and once you start dealing with yourself like i encourage you to spend time with yourself you know like do things for me i start making myself every two weeks i, I was telling you that last time too i go get my nails and my feet done and i go get my eyelashes done and that's time that i dedicate to myself you know we don't in the chaos of the world you can't always go to the nails like i'm account for everybody who can't my, probably do that every two weeks it might be a go once a month but sometimes like for me it used to be a part of my room that was kind of like pushed out i would just go in there and i set it up to where i could just kick it it's just a couch and just me you know Straight what i mean up. 
just spending time because we get afraid of spending time with ourselves too when you start getting depressed about shit because that's probably scarier to being in a room full of people you don't know if you can trust to be real mm. you know but that all comes with the transition like i said pick a different room how long do we stay stuck before we acknowledge a change has to be made you gotta ask yourself that if you want a bunch of, a bunch of yes men like they probably ain't good for you either they're unhealthy hello Hello. Malnutrition. Hello. But if we want to be in a certain realm of ourself and exist in a certain degree of peace and happiness, we have to be accountable for what we feed our spirit, number one. The room, like sometimes people don't, you ever been in a room where you walk in and you just feel how it's like a sigh of relief because it's finally good energy there? Oh. Everybody's suffocating. I used to walk into rooms like that all the time. And then what I do? I start realizing as I start healing, you become a mirror. And when people are looking at their own reflection, this shit gets shaky, you know? Not everybody wants to see who they really are. They can mirror your good energy for a little bit, but eventually your healing is gonna inspire a certain degree of a reflection for them. So now they gonna see like, dang, I really got this going on. That's why, cause they start comparing it by nature, you know, human comparison. But when you circle the block and you just be accountable for it instead of allowing it to make you feel like, dang, I can't never be there. Don't don't allow comparison to create intimidation either. We all human. We all got our own stuff. Everybody's dealing with something, you know? Everybody's gonna do things different way. Everybody has a different walk of life. And when you truly make peace with that, you make peace with yourself. Like, I might not be, you know, 26 and a billionaire, and it might be somebody who is 16 and a billionaire, but it's cool. As they walk and this is mine. That's how you start going parallel. Being everybody's business, you start, you know, crossing paths with the wrong people when you're not supposed to do that. So it sounds like for untreated trauma, if you're trying to treat your untreated trauma, first thing first is accountability. Yes. Accountability. 100%. And what's accountability? Accountability is taking responsibility, period. Whether it's for yourself, whether it's for other people, whether it's for decisions you've made that have impacted other people, just be accountable. Because guess what? When you understand and eat your own shit, can't nobody force it down your throat. It's already been done. I already know what that tastes like. I don't even got to take it anymore. That's why can't nobody genuinely tell me nothing. Because nine times out of 10, in any decision I make, whether it's good or bad, it goes the way I think it's gonna go, I take the time to step back and check myself first. And it seems like you're doing that too. Nah, for sure, I fuck with accountability heavy. Like you said, you check yourself. I don't let nobody beat me up. Yeah. Um, but are you beating yourself up? I don't necessarily beat myself up. I kind of just, you know what I'm saying, me? I, I, respect, I respect that. Like I said, these are the decisions I make. Yeah. And I don't know, I was taught early on, take it on the chin. Yeah. No matter what the consequences is, there's consequences for everything. It's a quote, not necessarily a quote, but it's something that nigga Messi Marv said, one of my favorite rappers. He said, uh, is you gonna be there for me when it get ugly? Cause it's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get ugly. It's gonna yes. get ugly. I fuck with that so heavy cause it's gonna get ugly. Yeah. And you know, it don't matter what the level of ugliness it, 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 it might get but it's gonna get ugly. Yeah. Um, I think I'm financially stable. Yeah. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm popping my shit, I'm rich as hell. Okay. You know what Hello. I'm saying? And, Hello. Uh, nigga, life is grand. Ugly nigga with a beautiful life. But even for me, it still get it's ugly. ugly. You is. hear me? No matter if it's relationship. Yeah. No matter if it's, uh, you know, uh, legal, legal problems. Yeah. Um, shit, it can even be, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, even with the family, I had to get custody of my daughter, so yeah. it got ugly with that. Yeah. CPS got involved, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Politics, it might get ugly with politics. Yeah. Uh, music has been my dream for a lifetime, and you know, uh, sometimes I feel like, you know, I ain't popping the way I wanna pop. So yeah. even then, if I'm in my own head, shit get ugly with that, you hear yeah. me? Financially, it might get ugly. But uh, it's gonna get ugly. Yeah. And so uh, self-accountability, I, I feel like you're right because it's nobody to blame. It's the same thing as like being an independent artist. You yeah. can't blame your label. Yeah. You independent, baby. Yeah. Take that on the chin, yeah. run with that. 
Find, go back to the drawing board and reevaluate. Reevaluate what you can do, how you can do it, and um, you know to excel. And yeah. so uh, I never blame the label. Yeah. I never blame the management. Yeah. I blame me. First thing first. What we got going on? What you yeah. doing? What you not doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so I think that's the same thing with untreated trauma. What you doing? What you not doing? Yes. You know what I'm saying? How can I treat this? And uh, Not every treatment is just like being in a hospital, though. Not every treatment is going to work the first time. For sure. You know, and not every treatment, like what I do, might not work for the next person. So I think it also comes with accountability of trust in the process. Mm. I might try something that somebody told me worked for them in a similar situation. And it might not work and for me. it might me. not work. But that's the beauty of being human. It's I gotta so many, keep tweaking. Hello? You just tweak it a little bit. But the key to it is having foundation. You know, like with the people who you've lost, they added to your foundation. And so that's why they can't ever go nowhere. And so when you take heed to and breathe off of that when you healing you understand like i got it in me not on me like i'm gonna make it through regardless but it's having the endurance sometimes like sometimes we're not built for it to endure we feel like you know to get to the other side sometimes endurance is really hard because it requires consistency it requires persistence and so stamina come on now it's hard it is hard and but be accountable and not afraid to admit that you know, in times where, like right now, you might be suffocating. You might need somebody to pass you with a little bit of their air tank. Mm. You might need a little bit more, you know, you know what I mean, in there. But it's being accountable enough to be like, you know what? I'm not all right right now. I need a little bit more than I'm used to getting, you know? And being accountable enough to ask from the right room. Because not every person is for every part of your life or every part of your season of healing. Like, some people might be good for this part of healing, you know? Somebody who's lost somebody. It might be resonate more with them when you lose somebody and they've healed over it. It might give you a different perspective. But a person who has lost somebody might not have lost them in the same way that you lost them. Mm. So you might need to talk to somebody on some gangster shit to understand somebody getting shot and killed and, you know, unexpectedly. You might like get a different perspective, but I think all in all, a lot of healing is is getting different perspectives and then putting it together to see what works for you. You know, but you have to have those conversations in order to be able to get there. Like you, your untreated trauma. What do you feel like you've done recently to treat your trauma? Album, that album, Untreated Trauma. Just releasing that, getting that off my chest. Yeah. Um, assisting other people with their untreated trauma. Yeah. I think that's where mo majority of my fulfillment come from. Yeah. So if somebody like a mother lost skin, mama yeah. skin, lost skin mo, and just that pain alone, she come over here and she see that pain and be like, damn, that's really my son. Yeah. And not only is that really my son, but you got him next to one of your most significant, yes. which is your grandmother. And so it just shows her how significant he is to me, getting the mm -hmm. chain done for him. Um, fuck her up. Like, nigga, damn, you really fuck with my son like that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hate I hate putting it like that, but like paying for a, a headstone. Yeah. And you know, just, just really being there, pulling up during Christmas, just being there and uh, vibing with her. Yeah. You know, due to the fact that I miss bruh, it, it brought me and her closer. Yeah. Cause it's like I see bruh and you. I smell it. I could I could I get his vibes. When 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 you pull up to the show and you vibe out with me, that's yeah. that nigga. It feel like he right here. So I think just <clears throat> assisting in other people when treated trauma really heals minds. Yeah. And uh I just had a a, a, a positive impact on that. But Let's tweak it up a little bit. Cause I know it's a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, be going through relationship problems, Ooh, right? Oh yeah. And I remember some of the good game and ism you gave me when you said uh, Considering people's perspectives. Considering people's perspective. Don't say nothing else. Let me get it together, yeah. right? You said uh, compromise your own self-beliefs. Compromise your own self-belief. I could feel like you know, this is my belief and this is this is the way I feel like a, a relationship should go. It's the way I feel like it should be orchestrated. This is what I feel like the man's position is. Yes. This is what I feel like the woman's position is. And I'm not really giving 
I don't know, I'm not really considering what somebody else's self-beliefs is. Yeah. And I'm not compromising because I'm going off my own self-beliefs. Yeah. Um, I think that was some of the dopest shit. It's kind of what it remind me of is like, all right, I seen a quote. I don't know exactly how it went. It was much shorter than I can explain it, but it was basically saying the trees that don't compromise or the trees that don't bend, yeah. they break. Yes. The trees that bend, you know what I'm saying? Me, they, they stand up the longest. Yes. They last the longest. Yes. And uh, that's what I kind of got from from your saying. Compromise your own self-beliefs. Is that, um, you know, if I don't compromise, the relationship, the tree symbolizes the relationship is just, yes. it fall, naturally fall. Yep. But when I compromise, it kind of bend and sway in the wind to the point where we can get it right. Yes. And uh, that shit has been very helpful. But, um, yeah, let's dive into that type of gangster shit. What is happening? Compromise, number one, takes accountability. I'm going to keep circling back to that word because, honestly, that's the biggest thing I've made as far as a change in my life is accountability. Like, for you, taking what I said, right, you said it's made a change. What have you done to be more accountable that's allowed you to compromise? Let individual win arguments that I don't want to let them win. Is there a win or a loss in the argument if you're being real? I mean, it ain't no crowd, so that's why I can accept the loss. Yeah. If it is, a, if it is a win or a loss, I don't feel like it's a win or a loss. But I feel like it's a sense of pride. Yeah, it's a sense of pride. And. You know, an individual might feel like I won there. <laughs> yeah. You know, arguing, the one thing about arguing that we have to understand is arguments do not lead to understanding. Arguments never result in understanding, truly. The moment that you come to a compromise of an argument is when you find understanding. So that's why I encouraged you to see other people's point of view and take and compromise your own self belief. What it means is, is basically you take the things that you feel are right necessarily in the world and even the things that you consider to be wrong. Because sometimes we'll condemn people because we feel like something ain't right. You know what I mean? They do it. But we don't understand why or how or when. All those are questions you got to ask yourself before you form judgment. That's all compromising is doing is really taking away the judgment, not the situation. Like, I'm going to see things from your perspective. I want you to just consider mine too. Mm. Like compromise leads to effective communication. Without it, I mean, what are we doing? I'm gonna see things from your perspective. That's what compromising is. Yes. I agree. I agree. I'm gonna see things from your perspective. I'm gonna simmer down on my perspective and try yeah. to, you know what I'm saying, me jump in your kicks real quick. Kicking it a little stronger than that though. Think about it. When you compromise and you listen more, you talk less, you listen more. Even now, in our conversation, we had, like, the powerfulness of it is that there was so much listening going on. The listening allowed release. When we released, then you can put everything on the table, and then now, boom, we can find clarity. We can put the pieces of the puzzle together if we know what we got in front of us. But if you don't even take the time to consider somebody else, you really only got half the puzzle in every situation. You have to. You have to ask people, like, why do you do that? I ask why all the time. Like, try it. When somebody says something, why? Not, you know, aggressively, not just some real kick it to your shit. Like, Break why? it down, yeah. Like, why? Break why? it down. Why decimal do form. Feel, come on yeah, now. Yeah, give it to me in decimal yes. form. Yes, yeah, but that allows them the room to consider why. If you feel so strongly about this, like, why? Why do I feel this way? Why do I think this way? You know, and when a person breaks it down, it brings clarity to you and it brings clarity to them. Because now you got a different perspective than what you probably was coming from. And they understand, oh, dang, maybe I am tripping a little bit on this, you know, but you got to be able to initiate the conversation. All right. Is there a such thing of too much compromising? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because in Let's go deeper into that, though. It can be too much compromising on one behalf. Now, compromising in general can never really be a bad thing. What it turns into sometimes is that 
because we're compromising so much, people for, form and derive a certain level of comfortability, and then they stop compromising. So all it is is somebody stop compromising. It's not necessarily that compromising is too much. It's just you gotta have a balance of the two. Like both parties gotta be able to come together and be like, you know what? Okay, cool. I'm gonna see it your way, you see it my way. But the minute somebody stops seeing it the other person's way, that's when you enter into disagreements and arguments. So compromising is just the other side of an argument though. Really it's it's where you find understanding and arguments are just releases of emotion. Do you think arguments is healthy for relationships? Even though I know it's inevitable. Yes. But do you think it's healthy for a relationship? Honestly, I don't. I think that it is an indicator that you have not found a compromise. Dial back on that. When you argue and you see that you had two different perspectives, all you're doing is acknowledging the unwillingness on whatever side. It could be both. It could be one or the other that somebody doesn't want to compromise or see the other perspective. Because literally, since I started to approach conversations like, no matter what, I'm gonna leave with a compromise because I know I want understanding. I don't argue. I do not argue. I don't go back and forth with nobody about nothing. Cause it's like, either I'm gonna be accountable enough to say, okay, ooh, let me acknowledge that we're disagreeing here. I'm gonna take some time to myself for me to reconsider what we talked about so I can find the compromise before I go back and forth with you and create extra energy. Cause that's, you know, arguments, think about the stuff you say in arguments. I never been one to have arguments where I have to arguably figure out how to apologize. I can't stand it. To say the things that you know you're gonna have to apologize for later. I try my hardest to stay away from it. Mm. Like if you really think about it, the, the ugly things that you say to people, eventually, if you really love them, you're going to circle the block and you're going to have to apologize for it later. And I guess you could say my pride too strong for that. Naturally. It's naturally. That's what I'm probably going to like. Who really wants to have to say I'm sorry? It's powerful when you do it, but I want to apologize with purpose. I don't want to just create situations where it's like you got to just keep apologizing and become repetitive. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So what do you feel like is your disconnect right now in your own situation. Not to go too deep, but we're gonna go there. Do you feel like it's, if you're accountable for it, what do you think you can do differently to be a better partner? Let me put no, it there. No, I think, I, I think uh, and I think I speak for a lot of people when I say this, but where you fuck up to the point where, you fuck up to the point where they expect you to fuck up. Yeah. You, you fuck up to the point where you're expected to fuck up. So, uh, you know, it's just like, uh, so when you don't fuck up or when you're not on some fuck shit, they're expecting you to fuck up. It kind of, it kind of tarnished the relationship because it'd be like, yeah, I was fucking up back then, but I'm on a whole nother, I'm on a whole nother yeah. hype right now. Yeah. I'm on a whole nother hype and you should embrace this hype. But instead yeah. of embracing a hype, it's like, nah, nigga, I don't, I think it go back to trust. Yeah. I think it's, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it got a lot to do with trust. Um, Accountability, why you got that thought, right? Yeah, but it'd be like, um, Do you feel like you're taking into account? So obviously when you have to keep hearing that you're doing something that you're not doing, it creates a certain degree of pride because you're like, wait, hold up, but I'm not doing this. But let's dig a little deeper on that walk. Like I created the realm for this to be what it is by continually like, I read a quote one time, it was like, you can say yes the first nine times, but by the 10th no, people don't wanna hear you speak. They don't wanna take it into consideration. And what I mean by that is, if the first nine times you were, it was a yes that you were doing it, and then by the 10th no, it might put a certain degree of, uh, you feel me like I done gave you these, so, while I'm not saying that you deserve to not be acknowledged for your growth, also put your pride aside a little bit more. That can be your compromise, you know? Put it to the side a little bit. You know you're right. The first nine times I was doing it, and that should be the conversation, because that's accountability in that. Like, you know what, you're right. You have every right to feel the way that you feel. Start with that. That, totally different conversation. You're absolutely correct. When I was dealing with my postpartum depression, right? 
my um child's father and i had a conversation like post relationship to where we were just like i just, I just told him i was like i really want us to build a friendship because that's the key to co-parenting if we're gonna separate we didn't already did it out of wedlock right we didn't already you know you feel me put my baby in a situation where it's gonna be one and two instead of just us three you know what i mean but the least we can do is build a compromisable situation to where she can coexist effectively, right? So we're doing it for the kids. Mm. But part of my conversation was the like probably the first majority of the conversation was, you know what, you right. I wasn't listening because I was caught up in my own emotion. Like I wasn't empowering you because I was sad. And you know what? I'm gonna take it a step further. I didn't tell you I was sad. It's not your fault. I can't blame you for the fact that you were not able to respond and ain't in the bed my healing because you didn't know I was hurt. You didn't see the wound because I covered it up, you know? And people say it should be intuition, but some people are just really good at faking it. And when you chosen, like, it's a different type of armor we got around us. So it's very hard to see in, like you said, unless I let you in. So I encourage that. Like, look at it from that perspective as well. Like. I'ma just own it. I'm telling you, the more you own your shit, the more people stop seeing it. It's when they feel like it's out there and alone and ain't nobody picked it up that they wanna come and they wanna, you know, throw it in your face and put it at your front door. But if you didn't already went back and picked the shit up, ain't nothing for them to find. Come on now, hello. So I encourage that, like in every relationship, the first part, like if you know you contributed to whatever, First, look at the relationship from the standpoint of, I'm gonna look at everything from my point of view, you know? Everything that I did that I know contributed to the state that we in in this relationship right now. When I do that, my next step is gonna be, now I'm gonna own it to you, the source, the person who I'm in this situation with. I'm gonna say it to you, so you know I'm accountable for it. At that given point, there's levels to it. Cause now, my accountability should encourage you to not have to keep saying it. Yeah, fuck with that. Come on. I fuck with that. And just try that, you know? Like, let me just give you what you're looking for. Yes. Hey. Is that all it is? Nah, it go back to compromising. Yes. Let me, you know what I'm saying? Let me bend a little bit, bud. Yes. Let me bend a little bit. Let me bend, like. You gave, I gave you a reason for you to come at nah, me. Nah, you, you right. Yeah, me. you right, but you wrong. Yeah. You right, but you wrong. Yes. Because now I'm chilling. I yes. ain't even on that type of timeline. Yes. And then saying that, even owning that, like, you know, even putting it in for whatever reason, there's a reason why you changed the way that you was moving. Something sparked that. You know, elaborate on that. Highlight that. You hear me? Highlight on the reason. Yeah. Highlight on the motive. Yes. For the change. Yes. Because some people, like, when you tell that story of why you did it, like me being like, okay, cool. The reason why I decided to come out of my postpartum was because my daughter had addressed my sadness and that fucked me up. So I knew I had to make a change. But that is more powerful than just saying I made the change. People want to know why. That's all it comes down to. It call it nosy, whatever you want to call it. But like people want to know why. Your partner especially. Why now? I'm sure that's a question that gets For asked. Sure. Like, why now? Why why are you choosing to do it? Give her the why. And when they understand the why, they can understand the how. Okay, cool. Dang, this is this might be reality. Might change the whole trajectory of how you interacting. Because now I'm gonna start believing you. And the more you feel like you gotta prove yourself, the more it's gonna get frustrated. So you're alleviating, you know, killing two birds with one stone. Cause you like, she secure and you like, okay, cool. I um, made the right decision. Cause if you gonna get it on either side, I get it from a man's perspective or even a woman sometimes. Sometimes the man is the nagger, you never know. For sure. <laughs> well, hello. All right, so look, we on big energy, right? Right. This is big energy, this right? This is big energy. All right, let yeah. me know something. All right, so how you feel about negative energy? Negative energy, I don't do it. You don't fuck I with it? I understand it coexists in the world, but. You don't fuck with it? No. Nah. I don't a have little to, bit? No. But keep throwing. No. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not no more. You don't more. fuck with negative energy? Not at all. I'm telling you, I check it at the door. That's probably the most aggressive than I am as a person. You don't argue on the phones with your partners, with with others, anybody. Mm -mm. You're not I'm, doing no arguing. I'm not going back and forth because why? Number one, I'm not arguing with my mama. Like, it's not, I'm going to listen and so let my pride subside before I engage in that. Because it don't be worth it. 
You know, you say things you don't You still need. find yourself yelling every once in a while. Every now and then, my child. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? Like, come on now, baby. Like, you knew, you know. But that's that's to create that dialogue. Like, it's going to exist. Ain't no world perfect, you know. But let me just put it like this. To the best of my ability, I eliminate all negative exchanges. And if I do find myself, because you're right. Like, I might find myself starting to go back and forth more than I would. And I'd be like, ah, Cool. We can't find an understanding right now. Like, my, one thing my mentor taught me, and it's one of the most valuable things I think I've carried from our uh, exchange of just information. Period. Is like sometimes it's just as important to know when to put your foot on the brake as it is the gas. Mm. So instead of speeding my way through a conversation and ending up at a dead end, I would rather put my foot on the brake and make that turn before I get all the way there. You know. So I think that's a part of the conversation too, as far as eliminating negative energies, putting yourself on pause. You gotta know like when there's a stop sign ahead, like, ah, let me just chill real quick. Let me not go there right now. Cause you might not be in the right state of mind. They might not be in the right state of mind. And that pause will allow you the room to consider that. Like, you know, you already upset. You ever argue with your partner and then you have a conversation later and it's like, dang, this, this, and that and third went wrong today. Nah, I fuck with that Because I don't fuck with negative energy yeah. At all Man I get far the fuck away from you Boy. When I smell it I if I could just smell it I won't even inhale it I could just smell it And be like, oh yeah, I oh, yeah I'm cool That ain't my type of timeline Let me wiggle You know what I'm saying? That's with anybody yeah. Down to my kids mm -hmm. They could be on some negative shit you know what I'm saying? Sad, mad, nigga didn't give them an orange, nigga didn't cut their yeah. oranges up for them, or a nigga didn't give them some frosted flakes, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Oh yeah, you tripping. Yeah. Are you crying because I ain't let you open a, a Christmas gift? Yeah. Oh yeah, let me get far the fuck away from you. you and then me? too, being able to assert that to people too. Like one time, it was it was a story going around back home, right? You know, just general gossip. I don't even entertain gossip for it, I'm gonna be honest. But by the time that it got back to me, the person who initially was telling the story was like, I didn't even want to bring it to you because I know your energy different. Mm. I'm going to tell who's around you so that they know so they can uh, let you they know can, what, they can They can run it to you. Yeah, they but, can inject it in you, but I'm not going to be the one sticking now, that in you. But that let me know I was living the way and putting off the right energy that I want to put off because once people start not feeling comfortable to bring you bad energy, like one of my close friends, like, well, my baby dad's close friends, he actually worked with Will Smith. And that's one of the first things he said about like his journey to success when he asked him was that he just doesn't allow nothing negative around him. And it seems far-fetched, but it's really not that negative things or bad things don't occur. It's your perception and how you deal with it, you know? Like, I'm not even gonna let this change. Like, boy, even preparing for this, there was so many hiccups in the road. And I just kept saying like, it's slow. Just flow, but it's not that you're not acknowledging that that stuff is happening. It's that you're making peace with what's outside of your control. Only thing that you have the power to control in most situations is how you respond. You're making peace with what's outside of your control. Yeah. You're making peace with what's outside of your control. I fuck with that. Ah, uh, talk to me. Big Ooh. energy. So, question to be posed huh. for our last little whoop the whoop. Okay. Do you feel like you are prepared for your next six months? And what are you the most fearful of in am that I, six months? Am I prepared for my next six months? And what am I most fearful of in my next six months? Oh, that's a hell of a question. Mm -hmm. Take your time with it. That's a hell of a question. I'm not prepared for my next six months. I'm getting prepared for my next six months. Okay. And I'm most fearful of being a cancer. Okay. Cancer vibes. I'm most fearful of cancer vibes. Yeah. And uh, when I say that, I mean like Emotions. overly giving. Yes. Um, overly emotional, mm -hmm. overly caring, yeah, just overly a lot of shit. I think I overdo. I think I overdo a lot of shit. Like um, I was just finna get my mom a car, and she only wanted a car that was about fifteen, twenty thousand. But 
I'm like, nah, I need to get her something for 40, 50. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It's my mama. You know what I'm saying? And uh, she pressing her issue about it. She like, nigga, what's up with my car though, yeah. nigga? So now I'm like, shit, let me go ahead and get her the one she wants. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get the yeah. shit out the way. Yeah. But uh, that's just me. That's me just overly caring, overly doing shit. And um, I think that's that's what I'm, I'm most fearful of. I think my New Year's resolution is learn how to say no. Tell people no. Yeah. Give it to a nigga raw and uncut. Yes. Nah, not right now. We not doing that right yeah. now. Um, you know where that's going to come from? Where it come from? You receiving it raw and uncut. Oh. Circling back to the first part. Oh. Accountability. You That's being where able it come to from. receive it, once you get that, because think about the season where Granny was holding you accountable. You probably was holding other people a lot more accountable because you had a voice of reason telling you, ah, 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 this is not how we doing it. So you, it, you, when you receiving something as a cancer, and this is, you know, we both cancers, how we kick it. For sure. It's a lot easier to feel less guilty. We guilt trip ourselves about holding people accountable or saying no. Me, boy, it took me so long to learn how to say no. But what you know what I did? One. I held myself accountable and I allowed other people to hold me accountable. And that bred a certain level of endurance as far as being patient with what it takes to communicate what you don't like. Because you won't consider when you tell somebody, like, hey, man, I'm not cool with it. You have to consider the explanation of why you're not cool with it. And so when you become accountable, you already know. So ah, point A, point, I'm so aggressive now. Watch out. Watch out. We ain't doing that. What I tell you about, uh, you know, negative energy, I'm not going for it. Why? Because it doesn't bring me peace. Why is peace important to you? Because that's how I'm living my life in the happy state I am. That's how, where this big energy came from. Yeah. You hear me? I found balance. My peace is balance. So I want to coexist there because that's when I'm the most fruitful in everything I'm doing. People got to respect that. For sure. You want me to help you. You want me to be able to aid and embed your process. However people need you, right? Whether it's to listen, whether it's to finance shit, whether it's just for you to say that you were around me, like, need me for that right but i gotta be accountable for the shit that i need too straight up and people gonna respect that because it's like if you want to make yourself a viable asset you know i'll make myself a viable asset but that's where reciprocity kicks in mm. so circling back you holding people accountable hold yourself accountable allow yourself to be held accountable allow it and just, oh, no matter how much, you know, that salt might burn on that wound, it's going to clean it, though. Mm. It's going to clean it, though. I promise you it will. And then, you know, from there, then you start practicing. Everything they saying to you, if I can handle that, you know, hey. Shit. Hello. Straight up. Come on now. Now nah, you're right. It's, re I, it's crazy because I feel like uh, reciprocating shit, yes. whether it be love, whether it be hate, whether it be, um, you know, just the assistance, mm -hmm. re reciprocating assistance. When I needed assistance, it wasn't no, it wasn't no helping hand extended. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now that you need assistance, I feel like, you know what I mean, as far as my side on the field, ain't no helping hand extended. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm learning how to deal with because I do a million favors for people that I know wouldn't do nothing for me. Yeah. Nothing. And, and even in return, like, even in return of the favors, yeah. nigga wouldn't give me a card, a birthday gift, or yeah. nothing. And I, I have no expectations. I give without expectations, so it doesn't bother me, but it still be like, okay, it when does. it's my time, yeah, when it's my time to suffer, why ain't no extended hands? Why it ain't nobody tapping in like, bro, what can I do to assist you? Cause you got me through this. Can I hold or you, you help me. Yeah. Cause I want you to marinate on this and I, my pops kicked it to me like this and I ain't gonna lie firsthand I was like damn that's fucked up but it's so real when you say you give without expectations if you're having to tell yourself to give without expectations that means you know you can't expect anything from them cause people think about it people who you know like it's just understood it don't got to be expected. I don't have to even ponder in my mind whether or not you gonna give back cause I just know we know what's known like you, I know I can give my shirt off my back to you and you would give your shirt off your back to me. I Easy. know that. Easy. You never have to talk about it. It would just happen. Easy. But I would never consider giving you the shirt. Oh, would he get his back? That comes from trauma, though. 
where you start to associate characteristics of, you know, lack of reciprocation just because you've experienced people who won't do it. But that's where accountability comes in. I allowed you to feel comfortable enough to not reciprocate, knowing good and damn well I'm worth the reciprocation. Make peace with it. Move on. Oh. Them folks who you gave to without expectation, you gave it to them. But you gave without expectation, so don't expect them to reciprocate. Straight up. Straight up. But guess what? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me nah, twice. Nah, yeah, I got to start re re reconsidering, man, because yes. it, it, it ain't a good investment. Yes. And it's like other people that I can invest, man, invest in that actually make sense that yeah. is a good investment, whether they reciprocate in other aspects of life or whatever, but yes. it's a good investment. But uh, so you're right, and that's what that's what I've been tweaking on for 2022. Yeah. Um, just making making sure that my investments are healthy. Yep. And they um, actually benefit me, because that's what investments should. Yeah. They should benefit you. Yeah. And uh, you just re reconsidering your reciprocation. That's it. That's Reconsider all you're doing. Reconsidering my reciprocation, yep. man. Because you don't want to be anything less than who you are. You know how people will tell you like. If this person isn't doing this or that, like, you know, just don't do it. But that's not me being me. So once again, like we talked about before, like stepping in a different room, sometimes you gotta kind of take accountability for that too. Like if I know that I'm worthy of a certain type of treatment, this goes for man, woman, children, anything. Why would I allow myself to be subjected to? I don't have to, you know? That's a personal choice. And so once I'm choosing to exist here, I can't be mad at anybody, upset, hurt, anything by that person because I already knew what it was. That's Straight what I'm saying up. with your reciprocation. If I know I gave it to you. What I tell you before, like some seasons of life and people, you're going to plant seeds, right? And then the universe is going to have you walk away from them. You're just going to plant the seed. There's other people who you're going to plant seeds and you're going to get the opportunity to water them, either with time, efforts, financial contributions, but you still won't get to see it blossom, right? But there's other people, and those are like your lifelong people, you know? Your schemos, your, Squad. you know, Brenda's. Yeah. Like, you know, that those are people who you're going to get to see the fruits of your labor. And those are the relationships that make you appreciate why you plant in those seeds or why you planting and watering those seeds, you know? But understanding that you got to categorize people. And that takes accountability. Like, I did need you at one point because that's another thing I don't believe in either is like certain times, you know how you separate from people and you be like, you're not good for me anymore. Nah, you was good for me in the previous season. I'm going to refrain from even saying that at one point you didn't reciprocate what I needed because you existed around me. Accountability. You know what I mean? So even with the people who you're giving yourself to, you feel like you just reconsider your reciprocation. Straight Don't up. hold them in contempt. Don't get angry at yourself or beat yourself up for giving too much because you did what you were supposed to do. You planted a seed. And somewhere later, God going to water that in your life. You know, it's going you're going to see the other side. You know that. That's why you stay so positive. That's why you suffer in silence. You trying to preserve your energy. Straight up. Hello, because it's big. Yeah, okay, it's then. big. B-I-G. Yeah. And so part of, you know, preserving that is not being yourself down and weighing yourself down with too much disappointment, you know? And even you speaking as being fearful of your next six months. I encourage you in this next 30 days to conquer your fear because the only thing that's going to be different is it's fear derived from uncomfortability. The uncomfortability and not knowing how something gonna turn out. Straight up. Manifest. Whatever Straight you up. want in your life, even if you don't feel like it's feasible, like manifest it. Speak it every day. Everything about this big energy brand, I speak to every single person as though it's already the next designer. Hmm. In its own lane. Why? Not because I'm just trying to put it out there and hope. No, because I gotta remind myself every day what I'm working towards. You know, be that God and light in your life, you know, and you are the light. We know that. You yeah. shine light in a lot of different rooms. That's pressure. But understand the purpose behind that pressure, though. It's going to build a diamond. So everything you're doing, you might got a hard out of court, you know, but deep inside, it's valuable. Straight up. It's valuable. And just remember all the work you're doing, like, it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. Like, this journey of healing, we just getting started. We just getting started. We just getting started, boy. But 
it's worth the while and your walk is gonna lead so many different people man i'm just excited to see you i appreciate it I'm yo excited. what's your fears for the next six months honestly what do you fear next six months honestly doubling uh, circling back on that question hello i appreciate you asking me yeah. but my fear is being scared of the success that's to come Oh, yeah, you know, I know you, about that. Yes, you know, when you get it's, it's almost unspoken about though, like when you know in your heart, right? The stars are aligning, they're in your favor, and it's never been in your favor like that before. That's scary. It is, it's scary to see the light head on, let alone to know that it exists. Come on, well, when you get that tunnel vision, like it's scary, but. What I do on a day to day to conquer that is literally reminding myself like all this untreated trauma that I worked to treat, it's worth it. I earned it. That's why I tell people like in one of my writings, I put earn every dollar you make. It's not just monetary. The time you put into things, they gonna yield a result. I put time into healing. Shit, this been four years, but like, you know, we, we got a long time coming with it, but I know that the things that are aligning now, being able to speak and try to help come have conversations of healing, because you know we we not doing therapy. Come we on. having conversations of healing and love. You it's, know, it's very therapeutic, though. You hear me? Yeah. I look. It's very I therapeutic, here. though. Yes, yes, but it's gonna pay off, though. So as a person who's working every day to heal, I want you to know, as me being a part of your healing, I've been there every step of the way. I'm walking with you, baby. So you scared of that success? Yes, yes. You know yes. that shit on the way way. It's on the way. It's on the freeway. It's on the freeway. That's why the energy has gotten so big because it's prepared. You know, sometimes we want things in advance of when we actually prepared for them. So when it comes, it's like, ooh, I actually worked for this. Like, I know I earned it this Come time. Come like, Undeniably. Undeniably. So, but like I said, fear is something that hinders you too. So. Even with you, the things you're fearful of in the next six months, now that you've acknowledged it, it's cool. We all have our fears, but it's a matter of mastering the art of not allowing your fears to conquer you. Mm. You know, you can acknowledge that they're there, but you can't let them become too prominent and you actually doing the work. You gotta overcome them fears, you hear me? Come on, nah, the for other sure. Side. For sure. What did I say I was fearful of? What did you say you're fearful of? Your next um, six, six months. months that you weren't prepared for them? That's what I said, huh? Yeah. You said you feel like you weren't prepared for them. But I'm getting prepared. Getting prepared. Mm -hmm. I'm getting prepared. You're getting prepared. And having to say no to people. Oh, period. say That's no. That's what it was. Saying no yeah. to people. Yeah. It was a combination that you It's a have combination. To nah, for sure. Because it's a, I overly do things. Yes. I overly, yeah, yes. I overly care. Yes. Being a cancer. Being a cancer. That was, those were your exact words. You were afraid of being a cancer, but that was your elaboration. And learning how to say no. So what are you going to do? And I'm already, I'm already jumping off to a bad start. Okay. But guess what? <laughs> It's acknowledged. <laughs> it's acknowledged. So now we accountability. Accountable. Hello. Yeah. Hello. So now I'm gonna get it right. I'm gonna get it right. It just take a little practice. I've been practicing, but uh, you know, it's it's it's. I just love hard. I love yes. so hard that you know. I feel like if I'm if I'm put in a position to help, that's my job. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing what is it an injustice to those who I love yeah. if I'm not assisting. Yeah. And you know, it's another thing is death. Death, I experienced so much death mm -hmm. that I feel- Recently too. Yeah, recently. Recently. But I feel guilty. I feel guilty not being more of an assistance. Why? In them present moments. Cause it'd be like, somebody had asked me for assistance. Rest in peace, Slim 400. Come on now. It's crazy. Dopest shit in the world. He asked me, he said, uh, he told me, he said, bro, I'm out here, you know, I'm, I'm enduring a beautiful struggle. Yeah. And I need assistance. Yeah. And I asked the nigga, what you need, some chicken? He was like, some chicken? I don't need no chicken, nigga. I'm a real nigga. I can live off that. Hello. Fuck me up. I never forget it. I never forget it chicken nigga i'm a real nigga yes. i can live off that yes. that nigga said nigga i need a, a project with you 
That's what. If you want to assist yes. me, I need an album with you. Yes. And uh, we went there. We made two songs. And uh, he, he he applied his aggressive press Ooh. to get a couple more out of me. And I was pump faking because I felt like two two is enough. That yeah. was justice. Yeah. You know, I'd be charging like 15000 a verse. So, nigga, I felt like, nigga, yeah. I just gave you 30000 to play yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and then he passed on me. Yeah. And I, you know, even though I know it's not my responsibility to feel guilty, just being the person that I am, the human that I am, naturally feel guilty. Like, damn, I should have knocked that album out with my nigga, man. Yeah. And not for the benefit of no chicken or nothing. Just for the experience, for the love, for the yeah. love of the game, for the love that I, you know, I naturally got for him. Yeah. Um, and just to see him smile, just to see him smile yeah. before he check out. But you never know a nigga date. And I'll be feeling like we got forever until we don't. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just, it, it fucked me up. And that's why I say I, sometimes I feel guilty and not being of assistance to those that I love dearly in them present moments. And so um, I try to spread myself thin. I try to spread myself thin just in case. Cause like I said, we experience so much of this shit. It'd be like, just in case, just in case I don't see little bread again. Yeah. Let me lock in with him. Let me go pull up on him and let me, let me, let me contribute some of my own personal time. Even though I get paid thousands and hundreds of thousands yeah. for it. Let me contribute some of my time, even though I know I'm supposed to be at home with the girly face game yeah. and invest in my time in it in. Yeah. Let me pull up on Lil Bruh because I know tomorrow really it's not promised for us. Yeah. And um, you know, this it is crazy. Same thing with Schemo. He was supposed to be on his way. He was supposed to be on his way to a meet and greet. We had a meet and greet and I called him and I pressed him like he be pressing me. Where you at? Nigga, that's your yeah. shit. What you doing? Yeah. And he pump faked on us and he ain't jump on that flight and end up passing away that same night. Yeah. And it'd be like, if I would have applied a little more pressure, I could have got that nigga on that flight. Yeah. Now. Can I tell you something on that thought? Uh, Love on yourself a little bit more. If you really, and this is just my perception from my conversation, you really believe that what's for you is for you. Can I, we agree on that? For sure. And so you also have to apply that pressure to the people around you. God won't call us home when it's our time. And sometimes Most in the definitely. flesh, it's so hard a pill to swallow. But you beating up yourself is going to deter your purpose for you to carry on the legacy that they were done with. They were done with their part of your legacy, of their legacy. They sowed the seeds. Remember I told you, sometimes you sow the seed, sometimes you sow the seed, you water it, sometimes you sow the seed, you water it, and you get to watch it blossom. They might have just been sowing seeds. But look, though, I hear you. I hear you 100%. Yeah. But I done got lucky sometimes. But it's I got not look. Luck. It's like, look, it's I can possible. see it. I can smell yes. it. All right, have you ever smelled death on a human being? Sheesh, my dad. Okay, all right. And... You can take advantage of that time yes. when you smell it, whether it be pictures, yes. whether it be voice memos, mm -hmm. what you can just smell it. Yeah. And on um, certain individuals, I done smelt it and I took advantage. Yes. I got all the pictures in the world with them. Yeah. I, every chance I got to take a picture, yes. come here, nigga. Let me, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, me. And um, and so it'd be like, I don't know. I think I just beat myself up with. I just beat myself up. Each individual that I'm talking about that I brung up, though, I feel like, yeah, I could smell it on them, but, and that's the why, that's the reason why I give a, I did them two songs. Yeah. I could just, I couldn't naturally smell death on him, but I could smell that anything could happen the way you living. Yeah. The way you living, the way he living. Yeah. Anything could happen. So every chance I got, every opportunity, it was like, come here, let me take a picture with you, bro. Because yeah. this shit going to mean the world to me one day. Yeah. And if it don't mean the world to me, it's going to mean the world to you one day. Yeah. We live the same lifestyle. You yeah. feel me? And so uh, it's just taking advantage of that. Yeah. It's taking advantage of that. The same way you would take advantage of your young, like you look at them and you don't naturally smell death, but you smell growth. Yes. And you be like, one day you ain't going to be this small, baby. Yeah. And we ain't gonna never be able to return to this. Can I tell you? I smell growth on you. Oh. I smell healing, all of that. Oh. So what you've acknowledged today is gonna to be powerful to so many people because I myself included, I 
could have hopped on a flight and went and gonna see my grandfather the day that he, the nurse told me he owned You this hear place. me? I told you. You that. hear me? But I didn't because I was listening to other people. You hear me? So I'm gonna encourage you. Don't put yourself in a bind from growing right now by holding yourself in contempt of decision. Now you know next time you smell it, you go, hello. Yeah. But that was the lesson that had to be learned. That's why they planted the seed in your life, though. The time you spent with them, the memories you have, whether it be Brenda, whether it be Schema, whether it be, you know, Slim Fox Porn, and like all of that time that you got with them was precious. You learned life. They experienced life with you, which led so when their inevitable income, because we all inevitably go in there. For sure. Point, you know, they were able to experience, they were able to carry that on. And so as hard as it is, as much of a journey as it is to come to that point, make peace with that, you know? Take what you learn from them and then apply that to what you're going to bring to generations to come because you're going to save, you know, many more just by your conversation, just by your accountability and your healing. And, you know, the conversations you say you feel that on you, you're going to make sure it's on them, too. For sure. For sure. For sure. Oh, big old energy around this motherfucker, big energy, man. You feel it? God damn big it, love. man. Come on, naturally. Yes, naturally. So let's go ahead and wrap it up, man. I appreciate you like a motherfucker. Me too. I feel like it was a therapy session, even though I know you be running from the little therapeutic you aspects. Know it? You know what I'm saying? So we're going to call it good game and ism around this Hello. motherfucker. Just sharing ism. Yeah, Share just sharing ism. ism. Ping pong and ism around this motherfucker. But, uh, yeah, that was it. That was a that was a dope spillage. I got a lot of shit off my chest. Um, I got a lot of insight, dope insight. Um, and so the feeling is neutral though. Straight up, I For mean, real. from the untreated trauma to relationships yeah. to recent loss, passings to. Accountability. 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 That's the word we're going to leave with is accountability. Accountability. But what was the other one you hit me with? It was the uh, reciprocated reevaluating. Reevaluate your reciprocation. Yeah. yeah. Come Definitely. on. Straight 2022 up. 2022 is our year. It's most definitely. Hello. Tell them we're here. Somebody get my mom on the phone. Tell them we made it. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> It's been gangster. Thank you, man. I love you, dude. My dog, I love you, mo squad. Big energy Cut. around this motherfucker. Cut. Hell Do it off. again. Do Hell it again. Off. Cut. Hey, that's a wrap, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Cut. Period. Ah. Period.